everybody, Pastor Michael here. Today is Thursday, March uh, 2nd, and today's daily devotional comes from Matthew chapter 15, uh, verses 21 through 39, and let's go ahead and read it all together. And Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from the region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord. Son of David, my daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. He answered, I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, Is it not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs? She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. Jesus went on from there and walked beside the Sea of Galilee, and he went up to the mountain and sat there. And great crowds came to him, bringing them with the lame, the blind, the crippled, the mute, and many others. And they put him at his feet, and he healed them. So that the crowd wondered when they saw the mute speaking, the crippled healthy, the lame walking, and the blind seeing, and they glorified the God of Israel. Then Jesus called his disciples and said, I have compassion on the crowd because they have been with me now for three days and have nothing to eat. And I am unwilling to send them away, hungry, lest they faint on their way. And the disciples said to him, Where are we going to get enough bread in such a desolate place to feed so great a crowd? And Jesus said to them, How many loaves do you have? They said, Seven and a few small fish. And directing the crowd to sit down on the ground, he took the seven loaves and the fish. And having given thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied, and they took up the seven baskets full of broken pieces left over. Those who ate were four thousand men, besides women and children. After sending away the crowds, he got into the boat and went to the region of Magadan. So when I read both of these texts, um, two things come to my mind, and we're going we're gonna to kind of work backwards here. Uh, we're going to start with the disciples and we'll work our way back. But when I look at the disciples asking Jesus, where are we going to find, you know, bread and fish in such a desolate place? I think, and I can't help but to realize, like, they have limitations on God. They only see what's in front of them and they can't figure out the solution. Men have limitations. God doesn't. And when the disciples were thinking of how they were going to feed the people in such a place that had no food, I can't help but to think of like my own circumstances or situations that arise or come up from time to time. We don't usually think about the resources, but we think about the circumstance itself. And we usually think of who, what, when, where, how. And these are like all basic middle school things we learn, maybe even elementary. And we begin to question, I think, what God is capable of, you know, especially when I look at this text here today. Uh, a couple of weeks back, I gave a um, Sunday message to the youth group about the story of Paul and Silas and how uh, they were going to the place of prayer and they you know cast it out a, a spirit in a girl who could uh, tell them predict the future and what happens next is they end up getting thrown uh, they get beaten and flogged in the marketplace and then they get thrown in jail but despite that circumstance they were in they didn't question oh how are we gonna get out you know they didn't ask why are we here in the moment, they simply prayed and they worshiped God. So when I think about Paul and Silas, they didn't place limitations on God. And what ended up happening after that? You know, the jail doors flew open and there was um, 
a conversation between the jailer and Paul and you know the the jailer comes to know Christ uh, comes to know the Lord through the events but Paul and Silas not once did they complain or did they put limitations on God but when I look at the disciples I feel like in this moment and here's the funny thing they are they are the closest people to Jesus yet so far away you know, they are the people who are devoted to following Jesus, and yet they're so far away. Obviously, it's hard to do the math with seven loaves, you know, and a few pieces of fish to feed 4,000 men. Uh, but not only the men, but the women and children too. And obviously, I can't think about that. But that miracle happened, and it was possible. Jesus did it. We can't limit God on his capabilities and what he's able to do. And we can't begin to comprehend what he's able to do. So that's the first part, limitations. Now, we're gonna work backwards, and when we look at the beginning of the text, we notice that there's a woman who has a daughter uh, who's being severely oppressed by a demon. And then we look at a lot of the crowd who is blind, mute, you know, they have all sort of sickness, uh, physical disabilities, and yet they follow Jesus to be healed. And the lady begs Jesus to heal her daughter. One thing that I see in common with all of these people is they were not like the disciples. They weren't the closest to Jesus. They weren't walking with him side by side, you know, enjoying all these grand adventures with Jesus. They were people who were desperate. And in the time that they needed in, in the time that they spent trying to get closer to Jesus, what ended up happening? They came to Jesus. The lady came to Jesus, bowed down, begged on her knees and asked, Lord, heal my daughter. And what does Jesus say? Your faith is great. Do so what must be done. And through that, her daughter was saved. And with the people following Jesus for, you know, three days, you got to imagine it's a whole crowd and I want to kind of compare it to like the Asbury um, revival that's going on right now. You know, people are waiting hours and hours to go to a place of revival, to pray to Jesus, to, to get healed, you know. And one thing I notice about that, and I'm going to close here with this. They're making room in their heart in order for Jesus to work. They're making time in order for Jesus to work. And I feel like that's the point the disciples were missing. They're witnessing all of this firsthand and yet they can't comprehend in their minds what's going on. And I just want to ask you guys a few things as I close um, today's devotional. Are there some things that we're having trouble trusting God? Um, are there things that we are having trouble opening our heart to allow God to work in our lives? And I think it is important, you know, I'm not saying go fly all the way to, you know, Asbury College and, you know, wait seven hours to, you know, pray in a church. But what I'm asking is just through our everyday lives, What's stopping us from trusting Jesus? What's stopping us from going to Jesus in desperation and asking, Lord, I need healing. Lord, I ask that you give me strength or whatever it is you may be going through. What's stopping us from fully trusting God? Because I look at the people and I look at the women and I see no reason not to trust God. If God is capable enough to work through this woman's life to feed the thousands and to heal the thousands, what's he not capable of doing in your life? And so those are the two points I just wanted to bring up to you guys and encourage you to come before God and fully open your hearts to God and ask him, Lord, I need healing. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, uh, Lord, just for this day you've given us. And uh, Lord, as we just study uh, just the small text in Matthew about a woman who 
Yuffie's daughter has been oppressed by a demon and uh, you feeding and healing the thousands that were following you. Lord, we see your love and we see your compassion and we see that you care for them, God, and we see that you're working in their lives. But that's only because you opened or it's only because they opened their hearts to allow you to work in their lives. God, I ask if there's anything that's stopping us from allowing us for you to work in our lives, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I ask that whatever that may be, or that we would set it aside, and Lord, we would allow you to work, and we would fully trust you in whatever you do, God. So Lord, we just pray for courage. We pray, Lord, for power and for strength to face our circumstances and not complain and not just see what's in front of us and to come up with equations that put limits on you. But God, would we trust your unfathomable power and your love towards us? We thank you and we pray all these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. Thank you, everybody.